Okay, so now I'm recording the lecture. So here's the deal right now. Um, everyone's has Weebly, correct? I think I just added uh, you, madam, right? Did you get the... No, no uh, Remind. I'm sorry, Remind. Did you get uh, text, uh, text messages and stuff? Okay, just making sure. Okay, and then... I'm sorry, I got like two things in my brain right now. And then the other thing is on my Weebly account, not my Weasley account, sorry. My Ron Weasley account. Um, uh, on my Weebly, otherwise known as just my website, I'm sorry, that's all I mean. It's just I use Weebly.com, which is a place where you can make internet sites. That's I literally just made a free one there. Um, let's see how long it takes, though, because I don't know how long this is going to take. Um, I uploaded all the videos. Any extra videos I've uploaded, please watch them, okay? So... Hopefully, if you've watched everything up to date, you should be up to 1.5, the section now, at least taking notes for it, okay, uh, while you're finishing up homework to get up to that. Today, hopefully, we only need to cover 1-6 and 1-7. Those are sections 1-6 and 1-7, and then we're done for the week, okay, and we're done pretty much going over any material you need to know for your exam, as well as just material that I would just want you to learn, okay? The important stuff from the section. So here's what it should look like on your website or on your section of the website. Also, be aware I have tutoring hours. So if you need to see me at the last minute, you know, like next week before the exam, come and see me during the tutoring hours, okay? So they're on my window. So keep that in mind. Tutoring hours are on my window. So here are the videos I have so far. All these you have needed to have watched already and taken some notes. The first ones are just uh, the lectures. And um, make sure you sign out your name and stuff, too, when you check it out, too, if you can. Um, and then these additional ones are the ones I make at home. So I try to make them as uh, short as possible, OK? But they're like 10 minutes, and sometimes that takes a long time to watch at home. OK, so without further ado, let's begin. The first thing that we're going to do is a warm up, OK? Okay, and focus here. So the first warm up I want you to do is let's see, just this really quick. Hopefully it's done really, really nice and fast. If you don't remember, please go with someone that does remember and work with someone else. Okay, so everybody on the board right now, get a. You don't need to write this down in your paper, but go on the board and please show me all the work to do this. Erase any work that you see on the whiteboards. Okay, and then figure out this problem really quick, and then we're gonna. Kind of show you something kind of cool, right? What? Oh, did you? Oh, nice! Wow, you, you already remember how to program a? Huh. Remember the programming by hot? That's actually very impressive. Okay, so let me back it up here. Okay, so find a place on the whiteboard and just show me that you know how to do this problem. Hi, Jordan. Uh, they're in that bucket, that gray bucket over there, in there, yeah. And you can grab an eraser as well, too. I believe so. No, this is uh, even before that. It's just like a... Yeah. Yeah, so nothing, uh, nothing too complicated here. I'm not looking for anything complicated. Very good. All right, very good, very good. And Ethan, right? Like, uh, yeah, I'm just a. All right, cool. Just uh, watching you guys. Very good. Oh, great. Okay, so the first section might be a little bit of review for you. So, yeah. All right, cool. And then just have a seat when you guys are done. And uh, Allison, did you already finish? Or? Okay. Oh, great. Cool. All right. Okay, I'll give you guys about 20 more seconds to kind of finish up what you're working on. And I'm going to show you what to do, or we're going to kind of review on how to solve these problems. Okay, 10 more seconds. All right, and go ahead and stop, and now return to your seats, okay? And now help me out here. With this type of problem, uh, Ethan, can you get the door for me? Just so like we don't have too much of a glare. Um, 
just so like there's not too much glare on the screen. I know everyone could probably see, but I don't want anyone like kind of like having to adjust their eyes and struggle with it. Okay, thank you, Ethan. Um, it's probably just a window anyway, but okay. So in this case, what do we do to solve this problem? X plus five times X plus four. Yeah, I don't know. Help, help me out here. I have no idea. First steps or like baby steps are the best. Yes. Oh, in here. Okay. So you distribute the X to who? All right, there we go. What I mean by distribute is I will multiply the x to these two numbers. So x times x will be x squared, okay, not 2x, okay? You won't, If you're adding x plus x, that would be 2x. But if you're multiplying x times x or x by x, that's x squared, okay? With the exponent in the corner there. x times 4 would be 4x. And then this 5 multiplied to this x in this 4 would be plus 5x plus 20, okay? 5 times 4 is 20. So altogether, you combine like terms. What like terms do we see? What are the terms that look alike? Yeah, Ethan? Yeah, so if we combine them, we add them together, we should get a total of how many x's then? 9. OK, very good. OK, I think most of us are looking at this like this is very simple, correct? Like maybe not everybody, but um, for the most part, we're like, OK, I think this is uh, pretty doable, right? Today. Now, go ahead and get out a piece of paper for notes. This is going to be the new notes. This is section 1-6. We're going to be solving x squared plus bx plus c, OK? We're going to be going backwards. You have went what I call forwards. You multiplied two terms. Does anybody remember the name of this term? Whoops. Does anybody in the name of remember the name of these two things in the parentheses? It starts with a B, a letter B. Yes, Leonard? Huh? These are binomials because they have two terms, right? We multiply two binomials to get a what is called what do you call it when you have three terms? A trinomial or a polynomial. So we went from so this is just review, okay? I'm not going to grade you on like your verbiage or like um, your terminology here, okay? But you multiply two binomials to end up with a more succinct and more, uh, what is it, more um, short, shorthanded polynomial. Today, you're going to be going the opposite way. So this is the name of the, the chapter here, the section, right? And what you're going to do is you're going to factor out a polynomial. So let me see. What would be a good one, All right? So actually, let's just use what we already know, what you've already looked at, discussed. x squared plus 9x plus 20. If you are inquisitive and we look at what we just did on the board, okay, you might already know how to go backwards just by knowing the answer, okay? But if you don't quite pick up on um, what we did in the beginning, you can make a link, then don't worry about it. I'm going to make that connection at the very end. So we're going from a, what is it, what kind of a nomial or what kind of a expression is this? This is a monomial, binomial, trinomial, or polynomial. What is it? Yeah, Len? It's a trinomial as well as a polynomial. It's got like more than it's it's got more than like one, basically. So that's what makes you a polynomial. We're gonna go from here and we're gonna go back into finding out what it looks like as two binomials. Okay? Again, from the warm-up. Just reiterate, we went from two binomials, multiplied them out, and got a polynomial. Here, we're going backwards. We're going from a polynomial back to its two binomials. That's a little bit trickier, and that's why we're teaching it to you second. We're not teaching this first. We're, we taught it the other way, which is a little bit easier. Okay, so we're going to have a situation where x is being added or x, x plus something, x plus something. We just don't know those numbers, right? So here's what we're going to do. Uh, first, let me uh, let me show you something, okay? Go back up to the top and add an A to the front of that title. I'm so sorry about that. 
I need to identify my A, my B, and my C really quick. What the heck does that mean? Look at this general equation. This is a general equation for all polynomials. Look at this one. This is our polynomial. Judging by this and this, and when you compare it, I could tell that my C, like, like here's the general version. What would be my C value in this expression here? What's my C value? One. Uh, Truman, go ahead. 20. C stands for constant, by the way, meaning there's no letters next to it. It's just a one number constant, okay? 20. What is my B value? So notice that the C is alone, but the B has to be some number that's next to X, a singular X. What number is next to the singular X? Nine, right? You guys see the nine in the front, right? So that nine in the front is your B. Technically, in our equation, what is our A, the number that is in front of X squared? It looks... I don't know what it looks like, or I don't know what it is. Yeah, Len. It's just one because it's kind of hidden. It doesn't actually explicitly say, but that should be one. How come it's not zero? Can anybody tell me why they that the A value is not zero instead of just one? Because some people might say, I don't see any number in front of it, so that means it's probably just zero. Why do you suspect that it's not zero? Okay, yeah, and Mateo, did you want to add to that? There would be no x in the first place, or no x squared, right? So, yeah, you can't have that. So if you don't see it, I, I have to clarify, it is just 1, okay? So here's the trick. So this only works if your a is equal to 1, all right? This only works if a is equal to 1. If your a is equal to 1, this is what you can do, okay? You take your c value so my technique is a little bit different looking from the one in the book but it's the same thing okay you're going to take your a times c and your b on the bottom of this weird diagram that i have here it's called a diamond i call it the diamond these are diamond problems okay what is a times c what is one times 20. 20. what is your b value guys please look at up here or please look at your notes what is your b value Nine. Okay. Now here's the deal. You need to come up with two numbers that add up to, or I'm sorry, that multiply to 20, but add up to nine. So they have to add up to the AC value, or I'm sorry, they have to multiply up to the AC value and also have to add up to nine. So let me kind of give you an example. What two numbers do, do we know that multiply to 20? Five and four. Okay. I'm going to save that. What else? What else besides that? What's up? 10 and 2, 10 and 2. So let's, oh, yes, I know, but 10 and 2. So if we, d don't write this right now, but if we said 10 and 2 are the two numbers, right, um, they certainly multiply up to 20, but do they add up to 9? That is a hard no, no, okay? Some people might say 20 and 1. They'll like go up and like, they'll go up in value and kind of go down like 20 to 10 to 5s to 4s to 3s, okay? 20 times 1, again, that is another situation where if you multiply these two, They'll get 20, but you will not get 9 when you add them together. 20 plus 1 does not equal 9. You need two numbers that can multiply to 20, but add up to 9. I think most of us, or some of us, have seen this. I'm not going to say most of us. That's kind of a mean way to say that. Like Most of us should know this. Okay, that's not true. 5 and 4 are two numbers that multiply to 20 and then add up to 9. If you add them together, 5 plus 4 is 9, right? Those are going to be your numbers for your binomials. So that's how you solve this problem. If it says factor out this polynomial, so that means you have to factor it out into two binomials, okay? You have to figure out what two numbers are being added to x. Again, this only works if your a is equal to 1, right? So let's see here. That's all we need to know, okay, for this. Do you want to work on one now? You want to try one. Okay, let's try an example that I'm going to kind of put up in just a second. Here's the deal, though. Before you try this out, pick a partner that you have not worked with today.
Okay. So pick someone else and you have to have a partner. You have to work with someone. Okay. That's my stipulation in this class. You got to work with someone. So don't, don't loan wolf it, right? Find someone and work on the, in it, like, even if like you're a person that doesn't feel like they're contributing, ask questions like, okay, what's going on? Can you show me what's going on? Cause I don't know. And like, I need to learn more. I need to be able to learn. I need to learn as fast. Okay. So help each other out. Here's the problem that I want you guys to figure out. I want you to factor out x squared minus 8x plus 12, okay? That is your goal for the next few minutes. Go ahead and try that. Go, okay? Everyone stand up right now. Stand up in your uh, fun boots, okay? And then find a space on the whiteboard and then give it a go, okay? And then go ahead and erase anything that's been previously on the board, okay? So, Malia, you guys are together. Catriella. Okay. Okay, so Len, okay, um, what's up? No, 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 partners two, two partners, guys. I think we have a E, no, we're good. Yeah, okay, group of three, that's fine. Okay, that's good. Actually, Truman, you go with Jordan and, uh, let's see. Oh my God, yeah, what's up? No, no alone, you're gonna work out, I'm sorry. Jordan and, where's the other Jordan? Has anybody ever seen? Jordan, Truman, and and uh, Allison. Sorry, yeah, I was like blanking out your name. So Allison, Truman, and Jordan. Everyone work on that whiteboard. You got you three work on that whiteboard, okay? Work out this problem. Okay, very very good. Okay, now you two walk around to help uh, help out other people, please. All right. No, just don't, don't say it like that. Like if you see like people are struggling on it, they'd be like, oh, I think that you should you should do this. You should do this. Okay. Don't don't ask if they're struggling. Just look if. You know, they're stuck on something. What's up? Um, you don't have to. Actually, go ahead and do it because I'm going to use it a lot. So just burn it into your brain so this process is redundant, all right? If it isn't already, Leonard. Okay. All right, stay where you guys are. So please check your answers, okay? So this is what you do. First check if your A is equal to one. Is your A one? Yes or no? Yes, okay. If it is, we can continue to use this, uh, this method, okay? So you did a diamond problem. Your A times C is 12. And then at the bottom, your B is negative eight, right? It's right there. It's negative eight. That's your B. And then you got to come up with two numbers. I found negative six and negative two. Did anybody else come up with something differently? Yes or no? No? Okay. So you have your final answer should be X minus six times X minus two. If you want to check your answer and you're not sure, okay, just actually, does anybody have any suggestions for checking your answer? How would you check to see if you got this right or wrong? Any suggestions here? Watch this. All you need to do is you don't have, don't write this in your notes. Just watch me doing this here. 
This is a way to check to see if your answer is correct. You would multiply these out. X times X is X squared. X times minus 2 is minus 2X. Minus 6 times X is minus 6. And minus 6 times minus 2 is plus 12. And then you combine like terms, you get X squared minus 2X minus 6X is a minus 8X plus 12, okay? If this matches this here, these two match, then you have done your problem successfully, okay? That means that you have the right binomials. Really quick on your paper now. Don't write this in permanent ink. I would suggest writing this in pencil. Try this one. Okay, go ahead and try that one. And then tell me if there's anything I should know for... Yeah, Truman. A does not equal 1. So what does that mean, Truman? Okay, so you can't solve it, right? So go ahead and try to solve it, guys. But again, Truman just gave us the big hint. Ethan already stopped writing, right? Yeah, because you're like, there's no point to this, okay? I know you guys are... All right, maybe you guys are finding another way, okay? Hold on, I'm going to stop you guys. I think you guys are just being really good students, okay? You guys are being really, really nice students. Truman already said this. Look at your A value, your B, and your C. Mateo, can you tell me what your my my B value is? Okay, it is 13. What is my C value, Mateo? And then my A value, Mateo? It is 5. Again, is it equal to 1? <laughs> All right, it is not equal to 1. So that means we probably shouldn't use the method that I've just taught you. This is this requires something else. And in fact, it requires something so new that is literally the next section. Are you ready for section 1-7? Ah, yeah. This segues right into my next section, which is solving ax squared plus bx plus c uh, wait a minute, Mr. Wee. I think you're a dope because uh, if I'm not mistaken, no, 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 we're not doing that. You've never seen that? You've never heard of it, okay? Because that could answer all our questions, but, right? 1-6 solving AX, but wait, they're the same thing. Okay, you caught me. It's just part two, okay? Your previous sheet of notes, the 1-6, was called solving AX squared plus BX plus C. That's all I wanted to bring to your attention. 1-7 looks exactly the same, only it's a part two continuation of what we just learned. I mean, it should kind of seem like that because look at my example. My example, as Mateo put it, or saw, was that it's almost the same thing. It's a polynomial, but the A is not equal to one. So the A is not equal to one. So you have to use a different method, okay? So it's going to start off the same, okay? So we need to factor this out. So again, the directions were to factor out 5x squared plus 13x plus 6. How the heck are we going to do it? Did, you, did anybody even solve for this? Are you going to get close to solving for this? Ah, it's like, it's kind of hard, right? Okay. Wait a minute, Mr. Wait. You said do something different. It will be different, but it starts off the same. What is my a times c? A if I multiply A times C, what would that be? 30, because you multiplied 5 and 6, right? Okay, and then my B would be 13. Okay, quickly come up with two numbers, sitting where you are right now, come up with two numbers that give me a product of 30 and a, and a what is it? What's the product, but when you add things together, I forgot what that's called already. A result. What? Huh? Sum, <laughs> even better than a result, right? A sum of 13. Besides Leonard, did we figure out what the two numbers would be? Besides Len? Besides Len? Besides Len? Len? I'm just kidding. And maybe Catriella, too? I want to cut you out, too, Catriella. Anybody know? What? The two numbers that add up to 13 but multiply up to 30? Yeah, Ethan. 3 and 10. Yeah, sorry. I know. So, uh, some of you guys are like, wait, what? Like, uh, I just want to hear new voices, okay? 
No, 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 don't do it. Don't do it in your head. Okay. Okay. Because your A is not equal to one, okay, or one, right? Sorry. If it's not equal to one, we're going to do, this is step one. Step one is exactly the same as before, but here's step two. Here's what you're going to do with these two numbers, okay? Follow my lead. You're going to copy down almost exactly what you had before, 5x squared, okay? Now, instead of 13x, you're going to add 10x and 3x plus 6. So in place of 13x, you're literally putting out the factors that we know that add up to A or multiply up to A times C and add up to your B values, your 10 and your 3x, okay? Again, this doesn't change. It just changed the way it looks, but it's the same thing. 13x is the same as 10x plus 3x, right? But now group them. Group them in a way where they have common factors. So like I'm going to group up 3x and 6 because I know what common multiple does 3x and the number 6 have? What's the common factor between these two numbers? 3. 3 can go into both 3 and 6. That's why I'm grouping them together. You want to group up numbers that have a common factor. I'm going to say this. 5x squared and 10x have two common factors. What two common factors are there? in 5x squared and 10x. What can I pull out of both 5x squared and 10x? A 5. I can pull out a 5, right? So I could pull out a 5 out of here and a 5 out of here. What else can I pull out of this and this? And then x, too. So I'm going to group it like this, 5x plus 10x in parentheses. I'm going to add 3x plus 6. And then I'm going to pull out the common factor of 3x and 6. That's 3. So if I pull out 3 out of both of these, I get x plus 2. If I pull out a 3 out of 3x, I get x. If I pull out a 3 out of a 6, I'm left with 2. Again, if I factor out 5x squared and 10x, I could factor out a 5 and an x. If I factor out 5x out of 5x squared, I should be left with just what? I want to write it down, but what would it be? If I factor out 5x out of 5x squared and 10x, if I factor out 5x out of 5x squared, what should I have left over? Do you know, Allison? Oh and Allison. Do you notice anything common between these two group, groupings of numbers that I just created? Yes. Almost the same, yes, with one key difference. The number in the front, right? So if they're basically the 5x is being multiplied by the same thing that 3x is being multiplied to. What you're going to do is you're going to, since they're both being multiplied, both of these numbers are being multiplied by x plus 2. I'm going to combine the 5x and the 3 into one parenthetical expression, 5x plus 3. And then you're going to group it, and then you're going to multiply it to x plus 2. And then that's it. That's your answer. That's it. Mateo, is this a binomial? Yeah. Jordan, is this a binomial? Catriella. I don't know what to ask you, but I just want to call out someone's name. Okay. 5x plus 3 times x plus 2. Okay. That's it. If you can check it by multiplying out everything, I guarantee you will end up with 5x squared plus 13x plus 6. Okay. Are we bored now? Be honest. I'm a little, no, I'm not bored. I'm the teacher. I'm almost having fun. Okay. So here, here's what I'm going to do 2n squared minus n minus 1. And that's going to be part one, part two, four r squared minus r plus seven. Okay. So I know if you can solve these, then good for you. But the main reason why we're going to do this work on the board in just a second, because I want to help out people that don't completely get it. Okay. I want everybody in this room to help each other out. That's kind of the main goal of my uh, study groups here. Okay. So please, if you know it, then share the knowledge, put it on the board. And if you don't know it, look around the boards and be like, how did the people do it? Okay. And then go around and ask. All right. So everyone, please stand up now, find another partner and solve for these two problems. Okay. Everyone stand up, stand up, stand up. 
guys, stand up, stand up, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out, shake it all about, and go ahead and find another partner, and then find a space on the whiteboard, okay? So, Leonard, Truman, I'm going to be strict. You two, not on the same board. Now you got to go to a new, one of you guys has to leave the board. Bye. <laughs> Oh, nice. Thank you, Alice. Alice is so nice. I like that. No, 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 no. One of you guys can work with uh, Athon over there. Athon. And you can work with anybody you like. Except them, right? Except for Catriella. And, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Everybody sign in already?
or the two and the two in because they share a lot of factors. Fine. Fine. Very good. What can you factor out of two x squared and two in? Can you finish it? Oh, okay. This was zero. So now we go to the diamond. So you're going to do 
So you see how I, I pull it up to our end? It's like 2 and squared divided by 2 and What is 2 and divided by 2? All right, guys, I think we solved 2n squared minus n minus 1. I'm going to write out the steps really quick if you want to write it down in your notes, just so you have an additional notes. You start off with a diamond. You have your a times c, which is technically just the 2 times the negative 1, which is negative 2. Your b is on the bottom, which is the secret number in front of n, which is negative 1. We found out the two numbers are 2 and negative 1. What you're supposed to do with those two numbers is you're supposed to bring them down, rewrite this as 2n squared minus 2n uh, I'm sorry, plus 2n minus 1n, okay? I just took these two numbers and brought it down. And at the very end, it's minus 1. I grouped it in terms of who has common multiples. 2n squared and 2n share 2, and they have an n. So I'm going to definitely group them together. And these guys as well, minus 1, minus n, minus 1n and minus n n share that as well so let's see uh, they're very similar so let's see 
Huh. Did I did I write something wrong or did I do something wrong here? Okay. Let me know if I did something wrong. I feel like uh, I did something wrong, but okay. From these two numbers, I can factor out 2n. So I have n plus 1. Okay, yeah. So, so I think some of... What was it? Where did I go wrong? Okay. All right, so I think some of us, I think I might have given a pass to where I should, where I think I made a mistake. So this is good that we're going over a second time. I think Malia's yours is good. So a few other people I like okayed, but I think uh, I actually okayed something that was a little bit wrong. Okay. I think uh, Truman, you're okay too. Um, okay. So we have minus n and minus 1. Out of these two negative numbers, I can actually factor out which number? What value can I factor out of minus n, minus one n and minus one or negative one? What can I factor out of these two numbers? I could factor out a minus one, guys. Okay, that will leave me with n plus one. And then both of these guys, two n and the one, are being multiplied to n plus one. So I combine them too. Okay. That's that's what should have been my final answer. It's almost the exact same thing, okay? Let's get started on B, and let's take a look at what happened at B. What is my A times C? Twenty-eight. What is my B? Negative one. Could we figure out two numbers that multiply to 28, but when we had a sum, came out to negative one? A lot of you guys are shaking your heads, and that is good that you are. You guys should have found a clean answer. I mean, there is technically a decimal answer. That's not what we're here for. If this happens and you don't get whole numbers, like no non-decimal numbers, you call this prime, okay? That's pretty much it for that. And that was also my second lesson in 1-7, okay? So right now, that's actually pretty much all I have to teach you. But hold on. I think I'm going to have to go through the graphing calculator. What time is it? It's a 120, 122. We got at 145. I'm going to give you guys two more problems to do, okay? Uh, you guys don't have to work on the board this time. You guys can work at your desk, okay? Just help each other out. I want everyone to kind of get help for this. 6x squared plus 22x minus 8. I want you to factor this out. And I want you to factor out this other problem. Okay. X squared plus 3x minus 18, okay? So please factor these out at your convenience. Please work with other people, like talk to each other at the table. So we're just going to spend like another 10 minutes to work on this to see how, how much we learned today. And I'm going to add one more dimension to this, okay? The three X and the two. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, you have a choice here. Uh, no, don't worry about that. I think you're thinking too far ahead. I don't think you need to worry about that. Just worry about your A times C and you should be good. A times C and your B. That's it. Just go from there and then uh, it'll work itself out. You don't have to worry about putting a, a binomial of three X and a two X. You don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to walk around and help or just be around for you guys to ask me questions. And then I'm going to have one more thing to go over with you guys. This is pretty much it. This is all the content I have. I 
What'd you say? What? What's up? Nothing. Sorry. We lost a lot of people in this class. I don't know what happened to Jordan. I, think, I thought we had like two other people. Okay, I'm going to leave this up here. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to fix up the roll sheet. I'm going to include you, Malia. This is for Thursday, correct? Okay, so where are we? Malia, what's your last name? Nelson. Okay, Nelson, you're going to be... Right before my pay. Insert no. <laughs> Nelson, Malia. Okay. Is there anybody else that's new to this class that I don't have? Does anybody know if Madeline's still in this class? Madeline Gross? Oh, Maddie. Yeah, she's Oh, no, she left the school. Yeah, that's right. She's gone. Ethan, you're still here. Leonard. Jordan. Catherine. She went to Linda. Who did? And she lives in the neighborhood. Maddie Gross. Oh, okay. I used to know her a long time ago. It's nice. Before I left the public school system in second grade. Oh, oh, I see. We went trick-or-treating together when we were younger. Nice, good memories. Yes or no? The bad memories. I didn't know that she had that. But she was a good person too, right? Alright, Malia, so now you're in the system. Now you're in the playlist. Okay, so you need to find two numbers that multiply these ways that they're going to be two zero. Okay. Okay. I'm going to give you guys three more minutes.
All right. All right. Is anybody need more time or we're good? No? Yes? Yes? No? No? Yes? All right. Let's go ahead and continue on. Hopefully, I gave you enough time to work on this. Would anybody like to volunteer what they got for the first one, their final answer for the first one? No? You guys haven't even started? All right, let's go ahead and begin, okay? So the first thing that we gotta do is set up the diamonds. Have we not figured out the two numbers that, hold on. Well, first off, what is A times C? Hold on, hold on, what is A times C? Six times eight, negative eight. Okay, and what is your B? 22, so what two numbers can we multiply to negative 48 and then you get 22 when you add them? Yes. Negative, negative 24 and 2? 20, okay, positive 24 and negative 2. Correct. Okay. All right, after that, you do 6x squared plus shh. You add 24x, you subtract 2x, you subtract 8. Okay. And then you group up your numbers. Okay. Hey, guys. Sorry. Can you uh, withdraw from uh, talking just for a little bit? Okay. And you said, uh, let's see, you group them up and then you factor out your groups. So I grouped 6x squared and 24x. I took out 6x out of uh, this statement here. So you have x plus 4 and then you should have minus 2x plus 4. This should be your final answer. Okay, let's take a shortcut on the second question now. Now, please take a look at the second question. What is your A value equal to? One. So let me ask you a question. Do we need to do all these steps for this problem? No. If it is only an A plus 1, and my A times C value is 1 times negative 18, that's just negative 18, and then my B is 3, what are the two numbers that can add up or that multiply up to negative 18 but add up to 3? Anybody figure that out? Two numbers that multiply up to negative 18 and then add up to... Th yeah. Uh, hold on. Negative 6 plus 3, Mateo. Do they add up to negative 3? Or do they add up to positive 3? So I think you have it mixed up. What if we did negative 6 or positive 6 and negative 3? Would that work? Does it? Yes. It does. Okay. What do we do after this for this type of problem? And like this, x squared, and then what do you want me to write now? Give it a try, guys. What do you guys think? x squared what? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is all you do. This is all you do. If you have an A, if your A is equal to 1, you just do X plus 6 times X minus 3, and that's it. Okay? So if your A is equal to 1, you do not have to go through all this work over here. If you do, if you do, however, if you do end up doing X squared plus 6X, and you do do it this way here, you will actually end up with the same answer. But you just don't have to go through this. So if you're not sure, then just learn this way and apply it to every question you've learned up to this point. You will be able to figure out by grouping it together and f giving a, a greatest common factor. Okay, you'll end up having that. Oh, like, I think I grouped them a little bit wrong though. But you you got to group it a little bit more correctly than I did. Okay, but either way, you're gonna get the same solution. Yes, Allison. Oh, do you have a question anymore? Okay, everyone, please get their graphing calculator ready because I'm going to do one more thing. One more set of notes for you guys. All right, 
This is going to be 1-6 again. We're going to go back to 1-6. And now it's still solving AX squared plus BX plus C. So if you check it out, just make sure you're uh, – oh, Allison? Allison, Allison. It, before you uh, check it out, make sure you put your name in the um, on that sign-out sheet. You see that sign-out sheet right there next to the box, young miss? Um, go ahead and just put your name, your calculator number, and like a signature if you can. Okay? Just so I know uh, who checked what out. Okay, because I've lost like three graphing calculators over like the last two years. Sad story. Okay. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back to that same problem that we just solved for, which was what? 8x squared. What was it? X squared minus 18 or something? What, what was it? What was the last question I just had, guys? Well, what was it again? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Here's the only thing that's different. It's going to have an equal zero sign, okay? And then it's going to ask you to solve. The other questions did not ask you to solve. It asked you to factor. So the other questions ask you to factor. This time, it's asking you to solve. This is going to be a little bit different. So if it asks for zero okay if it has equals zero by the way write this too y is equal to x squared plus 3x minus or plus 3x minus 18 is equal to zero the first step is you still have to factor anyways so you still have to factor anyways so the step one is you have to factor it out which we already did you can rewrite that a times c and b that's Negative 18, 3. So go ahead and copy these notes down, guys. So that's step one. You factored it out. Here's step two. Step two is you actually have to solve now. Step two is you solve. So this is the difference between solving and just factoring. Now you got to solve for x values that make this true. How can we make this whole side equal to 0? That's your goal. You have to find an x value that makes this whole thing equal to 0. Yeah, Len. So we could do this and this. x minus 3 is equal to 0 x minus plus 6 is equal to 0. And what you're going to do is you're going to solve for x. Subtract 6 from both sides, and you're going to get x is equal to negative 6. And over here, you're going to add 3 to both sides, and then you get x is equal to 3, right? Before I tell you what you just did, so again, here, here was the steps. I factored it. I set it equal to 0. I took both of these guys and set them equal to 0, and I solved for the x values, right? What do these re numbers represent? I don't understand what these numbers are. What did I just do? Like, all right, I just been doing work because Mr. Reed told me to do the work, but I don't understand what I just did at all. What are these values? Yes. Which ones? Here? You don't have to, but it would benefit you on the test if you show your work and then I see like that negative sign mumbled with that equal sign, it's going to be hard to differentiate for me. So if you mean it's a negative number, really mean it. You know what I mean? So just put it. Yes. Oh, uh, just x equals. Now I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's good. I like that. No, that's actually very proper. So that's what I was kind of going to get to now about roots, but why is uh why is this significant? X equals negative six. What does that even mean, guys? What does this x equals negative six mean? You don't have to give me. I think some of you might be like, there's a graph involved and stuff. I'm not there yet. All I'm saying is here. This is the value that if you plug this back in, if I plugged in negative six into here, what is negative six plus six, guys? That's zero. If this is equal to zero, does it matter what what comes out of here in this second parentheses? 
Does it matter what the number is here? Why does it not matter? If I plugged in negative 6 into here, this makes this 0. Guess what? It makes this whole thing equal to 0. And then that, my friends, meets this requirement. I want this equation, this y is equal to equation, equal to 0. So if I solve for x equals negative 6, that is one solution that makes this whole thing equal to 0. That's good. This guy over here is the same thing. I, I set him up equal to 0, x minus 3. I solved that x is equal to positive 3. If I added positive 3 back into this equation, it would have made this whole thing equal to 0, right? Again, I still don't understand what this all means. So grab your graphing calculator right now, open it up, turn it on. I got a graphing calculator right here. Pay attention to what I'm going to do on the graphing calculator, right? Uh, just turn yours on. I think you should be right here. Everyone start at this screen, okay? Follow my mouse cursor. This is my finger, right? So you're going to go to y is equal to. Whatever is there, press clear. Okay, again, so go to that very button at the very top right here, y is equal to. And then you're going to write in this equation. So follow my finger now on the right-hand side right here. You're going to put in this equation. You're going to put in this equation. You don't know how to write the x, do you? Very good, but that's not quite it. Oh, you're going to store the memory. What you want to do is right here, right at, right below mode, there's an XTO, right? Just like you're saying, Catriela. You can just press that. That will give you the variable X, okay? Square it now. We want to square it. The square button is right below here near the math button right here. Math, there's X to the negative first power and then X squared, okay? Then we're going to put plus 3x, I think. So we're going to plus 3. And then the x, again, is right here. x minus 18. Let's graph it. And then if you can, so again, you are here. Now press graph. Whoops. OK. And then now, let's see. Let's go to Zoom. Press the Zoom button and press 6. You want to standardize the Zoom. I didn't like the way my thing zoomed in or zoomed out. Did uh, Okay, so don't, don't do what I'm about to do. I'm going to zoom out again really quick. Don't zoom out. Just stay in the standard Zoom. Does anybody know the shape of this uh, graph that you see here? What is this? It's parabolic. Back on your notes, you're going to write that this is a, a x or this is going to be a parabola, a parabola. You're used to graphing lines, right? Anytime you graph anything with an x squared in it, you're going to get this weird u shape called a parabola. Press trace. Everyone please press trace for me. Trace, trace. Now if you move the left and the right arrows right here, left and the right, like, up, 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 up. and you look at your screen, look what the, the bullet or the, the point's doing. It's literally tracing the graph, right? What? It's tracing the graph. Isn't that crazy? Here, and then you're going to trace it to, if you go to the right, it's going to trace here. Please try to find out the point right I want you guys to get this point right here, where it's crossing the x-axis. Like right there, as close as you can get. Tell me what the x value is there, the x coordinate. It'll actually say around your calculator, the x coordinate. It'll tell you the x and the y value of your, your coordinate. What does that approximate to? What does this number approximate to? Or look at your answer right now that you had on your paper. What was your x value that you saw for? 
not just six, it was negative six. Now go to the other one. What do you think is going to happen if I go to the right? If you go on to this guy right here, try to get on the dot here. I know you're not going to get you're not going to be able to get it exactly. If you look very closely, the x value is approximately about three right there. So what you just solve for is where the parabola basically where the parabola crosses the x intercept. Because if you think about it, your y value, you set your y or your whole equation equal to zero. Did you not? If you set your equation equal to zero and you found the x values, what you have found is where y is equal to zero. And where y is equal to zero, you that's where you cross the x-axis. So you cross the x-axis here and you cross it here. Your y value is approximately going to be zero. Right about there. See? So that's where you just solve for, okay? All right, guys, go ahead and turn off your graphing calculators. Put away your chairs and put away your graphing calculators. That is the end of class. You are not going to graph for the exam. I just wanted to show you conceptually what you were doing this whole time. But everything that you need to know for the exam to study for is on the videos that are online. You guys just need to go home and study now, okay? Best of luck, guys. You guys have a great weekend and a great day.